Ooh, I love the picture. Welcome back, fans, to episode two of our Penguin review, our off-ice review. I'm EA the PA. I'm here with Little Ed. We're going to be reviewing episodes three and four of The Penguin. So three, I felt like, was kind of a buffer episode. Um, it was a little... I don't want to say boring because that's dramatic, but it definitely felt like it was leading up to something else. Yeah, it's a setup episode for sure. Um, early on in the season, they did a little bit of background. You find out more about uh, Vic, right, in the mm-hmm. beginning with the flashback. Um, so, yeah, I think it's like, I mean, it's like what we kept on saying about Game of Thrones. Like, oh, don't worry. That's just a setup episode. Like, next week will be better. And then it just kept on it just kept on being a setup episode or they kept they kept tricking us into thinking it was a better episode than it actually was. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's just that's the case. I mean, even this this was a, a boring, quote unquote, boring episode. I don't think it was very boring. I mean, even like the opening scene was very I think this is my favorite word. If you want to make a drinking game out of this show, whenever I say powerful, <laughs> I think you can uh, take a sip. But. Why don't you re- read us the synopsis? I think that's a good way to to remind everybody about episode three before we take a deeper dive. Yeah, so episode three was called Bliss. Oz and Sophia make moves as they attempt to take control of Gotham's drug trade. Victor is reunited with someone from his old life. So Bliss is the drug name, which is what we find out later yeah, on. Later on. Um, it starts out with the flashback to Victor's, I guess they, I don't know how long ago it was, but when the water, when the bombs go off and the water comes through where he lives and he's watching from the rooftop of his girlfriend's building and he sees the water going towards where his parents and I think sibling yeah, were and he tries to call. Yeah. He tries to call his mom and he's too late, which is really sad. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed a few things in this scene. Well, I mean, first off, they show him like coming home, and his father is like cooking for the family. You could tell like he they they live kind of in like a small apartment with with a few of them, or whatever. So you could kind of get the feeling that like his dad is like a hardworking guy and like an honest man, whatever. And like he kind of like says it to Victor that like <clears throat> he doesn't like he doesn't want him getting into trouble because he he hears about. One of the friends he's about to go hang out with or whatever. Yeah. Is like a, is a drug dealer or something. Mm-hmm. And Victor even says, he's like, don't worry about me, dad. Like, just because I'm hanging out with people doesn't mean I'm the one actually doing those things as well or, or whatever he says. Um, but I noticed that his stutter was a lot worse in this scene. Yeah. I don't know if that was intentional or if he was just like talking more or we were seeing him talk more than we have. Like he had more of like a dialogue with his dad. Then I guess like the penguin doesn't really let him talk much. You know, he always cuts him off, but like his dad was letting him talk and you kind of like heard more and more of the stutter. Also, when he talks to his girlfriend, I feel like he doesn't really have the stutter. Because he's more comfortable with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of, you said it already. So he ends up going to hang out with his friends, his girlfriend, and he sees the flood coming in. They hear the explosions. They think it's, they think it's fireworks, but they look around. It starts being explosions all over the city. And then, like I said last time, if you guys haven't watched the Batman, the the recent movie that came out two years ago, or what was it? Yeah, I think two years ago. You should definitely go check that out. Um, it leads right into the series, like I said last episode. Um so I guess after he sees them, they die in the flood. Like it kind of flashes back forward to current time. Uh, I wrote down: Was it only a week that, like, between him seeing his family die and and Oz going to find him? I mean, for some reason, I forget why I wrote down one week question mark. Um, but it doesn't seem like a lot of time has passed, especially like if you go back to episode one, like the sequence of events of episode one, and like you see Oz watching the flood and then he almost like catches Vic like he catches Vic that night right yeah if that if not that like maybe a couple days later but I'm sure the flood was there for a few days too so hard to say 
how long he was like when he was watching it when it just happened or not yeah i don't think it was that long which is pretty crazy like how did he i guess like they can't show everything but like how did he move on so fast how did he get to like where he was at that time when he was stealing the tires well, he probably got mixed up with those guys because he already was hanging out, like the dad said, with the bad crowd on the roof. And even the girlfriend said she didn't like that group. Mm -hmm. So like, he probably hit up like all those bad people because he knew like they would help him make quick money because now he's on his own. So it's probably just a quick meet up and yeah, make money the easy way. Yeah, I'm trying to think back because he like, because Penguin like catches him and he's like, "This is what you were trying to do. Like, don't don't you have like bigger goals than that or whatever?" And he actually says that to his dad in the flashback. He's like, "Don't you want a better life for us or something? Like, don't you want to get out of this apartment or whatever they whatever he said?" Um. So so in that flashback, you can already see like Vic wanted to have this better life or get out of the projects or whatever. Um. But it's ironic point is where they lived. Yeah, it's ironic because he ends up right in the drug business with Penguin. Right, right. So, so obviously this is going to like eat away at him kind of. And we see it um, later on, like his dad wanting him to just be an honest man instead of making money the wrong way and uh, things like that. Um, so it flashes back to current time, we'll call it like current time in the show, of course. And um, I guess episode two ended with uh, Sophia and Penguin kind of making up and becoming quote unquote partners. Mm -hmm. And and Vic is like super confused. He's like, so are we like partners with Sophia now? Or like, what's the deal? Like, can you fill me in here? Because if I'm going to be working with you, I kind of want to know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oz, Oz makes sure he says temporarily Puts yeah, an emphasis on the temporarily. I started um, that too because it sounds like he was planning this whole ditching her type of thing. Yeah, I mean, Oz always has something up his sleeve. I mean, it's no secret at this point he's trying to play both sides. Um, so I don't think just because Sophia is trying to be friendly with him all of a sudden that he's all he's going to also believe her and fall for fall for that and also like make himself vulnerable. Um, so like with that, he starts to give Vic like this speech, like he's like, all right, like no more screwing up. Like you gotta be better than this. Like you need to show some more initiative, blah, blah, whatever he was saying. And he's like, all right, well, actually I never paid you yet. And he gives him a thousand bucks and he's like, what's this for? He's like, yeah, we'll start you off at a thousand a week. He's like, what do you say to that? He goes, I want 2000. And he's like, that's what I'm talking about, kid. But no. <laughs> <laughs> So he's happy that Victor's kind of trying to like whatever, but he's like, no, that's not happening yet. And then Sophia comes over and Victor kind of already starts screwing up again. And he like kind of starts stuttering uncontrollably, fumbling over his words, didn't have a good backup story, which I got to blame Oz for too, because they never talked about a backup story or what to tell Sophia, how they found each other or whatever, you know, because that could also lead to that whole night and, Sophia didn't know that he was there that night. So then she could start questioning him, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I wrote down, which I thought of when we talked last time about this little thing, when he was trying to plant the jewels in the car and he got caught. You had you said, I, I wonder if they get, said like to his description to the whole family and stuff to try to figure out who it was because I felt like she was studying him in the apartment in the scene, like really looking at him, like smoking and just like trying to, I think she knows that that's who did it or at least had a suspicion, like maybe not a hundred percent cause she probably wouldn't have agreed, but she kind of was, I think really trying to figure him out and figure out also why Oz is in dealings with like a teenager. Right. I mean, I it's like I said, it's like no secret. It's really no secret to anybody that Oz just always has something up his sleeve or he's not, he's never completely telling the truth. Yeah. I don't know why she trusts him. Like, I think she maybe is just planning on getting whatever she can from him and then ditching him. But 
Oh yeah, we said that last episode because like even you find out that Falcone Carmine knew the whole time that he was stealing from him a little bit, but it's like, all right, just leave him alone. He's valuable. Let him take a little bit off the top. We know we need him in the long run type of thing. So everyone knows he's shady, but they also know that they can kind of use him, you know, because Oz already had that's what kind of segues into the next thing is Oz already has the the shoe in with like the whole area that he controls with the drug trade, right? He already has that factory. He already has like all of his clientele. He already has uh, clubs, lounges, whatever, the iceberg lounge. Um, so he is a very resourceful person and he is someone that you do want to be your friend, but you got to keep a close eye on, which is, I think what she's doing. <clears throat> yeah. He has the connections for sure. And an important thing that you find out around this time was, she says something to him like don't make sure you don't forget that or i don't make sure that you remember that i don't forget that you used to be my driver or something like that and then that's when you find out that oz used to work for well we know that we he worked for carmine but that was his job was to drive sophia around and be her protector or her handler mm -hmm. um so then you see after they talk about the whole drug thing and then you see where the drugs are actually coming from so you notice that it was on the bag, right? That they're all coming from Arkham. Um, and then Victor, <clears throat> in the midst of all of this, he gets the news that his girlfriend's deciding to leave and like start a fresh life. She says California, right? So she wants to go across country and just get as far away from Gotham as possible. Which I wish he went with her, but... Well, yeah, she gives him the opportunity. We'll see that later on in this episode. <clears throat> um, but she gives him the opportunity to leave, and then that's something that he has to kind of like go back and forth with in his mind. He knows he has a good situation. Um, so he's kind of like, do I bail on my girlfriend or do I bail on Oz, um, who's literally just told me he's going to be paying me a thousand bucks a week? You know, so that's obviously a hard decision. Even though morale, the morality is starting to kick in where he's probably thinking like my dad would want me to leave. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little side note. You see him meet with his girlfriend. He invites his girlfriend over to Oz's apartment, which I thought was going to be a lot worse than it was. Uh, I thought Oz was going to like come home early and find them together, but that never happened. So that kind of like left you on the edge of your seat a bit. It was funny when he left. Victor there and he's like, don't do anything. I'll smell it if you do or something. Right. Like, so he's, he sees her like forcing a coaster on her or you, we see her, him fo forcing a coaster on her and like making sure that uh, he doesn't get in trouble. Um, so he's kind of like talking a big game like, oh, I work for this guy now. Like he loves me, blah, blah, blah. But then at the same time, he's like, I can't screw up again. Like he's a bad guy type thing. Mm hmm. So then she's kind of getting the getting the vibe, I guess, probably. And she starts to question the situation. And then that's when she says that she's going to leave and she wants him to come also. Um, so then we flash back to or go back to Sophia's situation. <clears throat> and uh, Johnny Vitti approaches her in the hallway of the house and hands her a ticket to go to Italy. Right. It hands her the boarding pass. Mm -hmm. And was like, listen, your uncle Luca has spoken. Uh, he's in charge of the family. It's not you. You better, you got to get out of here um, or else. Like he doesn't say or else, but definitely hints towards that saying <clears throat> it's either that or we're going to kill you or put you back in Arkham or something like that. So then she knows that she has to come up with a plan because there's no way she's leaving. And uh, that's where she meets back up with Oz. And they decide they need to push forward with this drug plan immediately. Um, so do you remember where who they meet with or who they try to meet with initially? The Asian guy? Yeah, so it's the triad gang. Um, I guess they have like the Portuguese, which is not, not Portuguese. Maroni's like Italian and Portuguese. His wife, the mm -hmm. woman with like the weird accent, she's Portuguese. So you have like the Portuguese Moroni gang, then you have the triad Asian gang, and then you have the Falcone gang. And they're all kind of like obviously competitors, but technically Falcone runs the whole thing. 
um, but they all kind of compete and they all have their own territories. Um, so it seems like the triads have like all the clubs, like the EDM type clubs, you know, like the, I guess, party drug type places. So that's where they go to first to try and introduce the new, the new drug that you mentioned before called bliss. Mm -hmm. And this is the drug that Sophia was getting, was getting given to her in Arkham and all of the other patients. Um, which I guess is, uh, they showed it already. It's a mushroom. So you can compare it to, I guess, real life uh, mushrooms that kind of give you like that euphoric, just blissful feeling and like kind of hallucinating a little bit. And then we see them experiment with the drug or give them, start handing out the drug in the club. Um, and yeah, I guess that's where they kind of like start to get their plan into motion. I also wrote down here that I kept saying last episode, like under uh, lieutenant or captain or whatever of like the, the mob, they kept referring to Johnny VD as an underboss. So that's the word I was looking for. So for the, for the gangster or the mob family, you have the boss and then you have like the underboss. So Johnny VD is like the second guy in command right now. So that's why they say he's supporting their like new drug ring. That's what they right. tell the triad guy to get him to be on board. Yeah. So obviously they really hate uh, Johnny Vitti or Sophia does. Um, she's trying to find a way to get rid of him, but then she realizes now that she needs him um, because the triads aren't going to believe anything Sophia says. <clears throat> They're just going to go with uh, what, like, I guess the men say of the family. Um they don't trust Sophia. I mean, in traditionally in Italian or mob families, it's always the men or the <clears throat> the sons that take the throne or take in charge next. And even so, in this case, you see the uncle take control, even though Sophia is technically the next one in line. Um, so it goes that way with their competitors. Their competitors aren't respecting Sophia as the head of the family. They need to hear it from Johnny Vitti or Luca himself. So now this is where Oz and Sophia... <clears throat> start having fun with each other. And uh, Oz actually says to Sophia, like, come on, admit it, you're having a little bit of fun. <coughs> but, bless you. When they go to set up Johnny Vitti. Um, so do you remember how they set up Johnny Vitti? Yeah, I was wondering why the the girl agreed. Like, did they threaten her? So they basically get the Luca's wife, who he's sleeping with anyway, to go meet him in a hotel room in order for them to catch him and blackmail him basically. So I don't know why she would agree to that. That was something I'm I was questioning. Yeah, they didn't actually say it, but I'm assuming they were probably like, we're going to tell Luca if you don't do it. Just you know, because yeah. So then Luca, Luca would just kill them both. <clears throat> so they bribed her in that way, I guess, to keep her or to keep her like thinking that she'll be safe, I guess. Um, but realistically, they're never going to be safe in that situation now that people know. Yeah. Um, so after that, <clears throat> they convince Johnny to call the triads. And then that's where the triads kind of agree um, to at least like watch the experiment happen, I guess, where they start giving it out to the people. Yeah. And then even after that, they're not really convinced. And you see Oz kind of not give up. But he kind of like storms out, right? Like storms out of the club and leaves Sophia to deal with them on their own, on her own. And um, Oz is outside. And so we find out later that Sophia kind of talks the triads into the deal. Uh, we don't really see how or anything like that, but she comes outside and tells Oz that. Like they're going to do it type thing. And while they're in the club, when Victor is like getting a... a um in trouble with the cop remember Which was that? when the cop he's like parked in a no loading oh zone. yeah 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 go ahead and the cop comes to the window and he's like get out of the vehicle and he pats him down and all that stuff and he finds the cash that oz gave him and he's like what why do you have all this money or what's all this money doing in your pocket and he's like what money right so the cop takes it and lets him off the hook and just says, like, move the car or something. Right. So this is, like, kind of <clears throat> foreshadowing in a way that, like, Victor's try finally starting to think on his feet. Yeah, and get street smart. 
he gets street smart a little bit and like the whole reason was he had the backpack of drugs like just out on the front seat mm -hmm. so he threw it on his feet uh bribed the cop and then oz ends up being proud of him for doing that he's like ck you're finally starting to get it whatever blah blah, blah. and he's like he's like only a thousand bucks that's all it took you or, or that's all it took or something like that like no big deal like we're gonna make way more than that selling that like whatever's in the backpack um so yeah, that was a little bit before that. <clears throat> and then uh, Oz or Victor finally tells Oz like the truth kind of about his girlfriend leaving and him wanting to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's not sure what to do. And he feels like, and Oz kind of like snaps on him. He's like, you think that I'm keeping you here? I'm not keeping you here. Like, is this how you're feeling? And he's like putting the gun to his head and stuff. And he's like, you can leave whenever you want. Like, go ahead, leave, whatever. And not pushing him away, but, uh, but at the same time, like kind of testing him, I think. And it's kind of like Oz feels like he's getting abandoned again. So he's kind of just like covering up how he's actually feeling by just saying like, go ahead, go like, whatever, just go, you know, classic abuser move. <laughs> yeah. So you see Victor go to the bus stop or the bus station and you see him park the car and like watch his girl from, from afar. Um, but then he gets second thoughts and, um, that's when they flash back to Sophia and Oz outside the club and she's telling him everything about the triads or whatever. And they're like kind of having a heart to heart and Oz finally like opens up to her and says, you know, yeah, I knew, I knew I fucked up. Like I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have told your dad like what, like that you went to the, the, um, actually we don't find out this yet. So she next episode, episode four. Awesome. Yeah, he she said you ratted on me and he's like, I had no idea he was gonna do that to you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So we find out that it was actually Oz, but we don't exactly know what happened. Um, so then she's like, How do I trust you? And then like as soon as and, and he goes, Well, you just gotta let me keep proving it to you, or something like that. And as soon as he says that, the Portuguese Moroni family come pulling up on them get them both down on their knees about to kill them. And she's like, how could you do this to me? And um, the Portuguese, I forget her name, tells Sophia that it was Oz who killed her brother. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I can't believe you. it was you, blah, blah, blah. And then Victor comes out of nowhere thinking on his feet and runs over the guy that was about to shoot them. And then Oz gets in the car and, and they leave Sophia behind. Um, looking for the wife's name. <clears throat> of course, I I wrote it. Nadia. Oh yeah. Nadia. So Nadia's uh, Maroni's Maroni's wife. Maroni's still in jail, so Nadia kind of runs the family while he's there. Um, not kind of. She does. Um, and yeah, I mean that's basically where episode three ends off. I mean it's pretty crazy that <clears throat> as soon as. Or I found it weird, not weird, but like, how could he tell Sophia that? And then also in like the same breath say, we got to leave her. Let's just go. Like, it's not exactly showing her that you, she could trust you. At that point, he was screwed, though, because she, oh, well, we find out in episode four what actually was said, too. And also when when he when they were down on their on their knees, <clears throat> he kind of was like pleading for his life with the with Nadia saying like no come on you got to believe me like i would never lie to you so by him saying that to her sophia seeing that he was saying the same exact stuff to her you know so sophia's like realizing that he could just lie to anyone the same way he's been lying to her and obviously starting to see that uh the whole thing was a setup and she's been get, she's been getting played um so were there any other things in episode three we should go back on um i think it's this episode when she wakes up and says i'm not safe i'm home is it that this episode she says it to the doctor where does she say that in four i can't remember but well they kind of um this one when she see. Or I don't know, maybe it was episode two, but it was in the, like when I was watching episode four, it's shows in the previously on. So I thought it might've been episode three, but it's, I think after he's like hypnotizing her, she freaks out and then he's like, you're safe, you're safe. She's like, I'm not That's safe. when she had the, that's when she had the red light on. 
Yeah. So I thought that was like a strong statement. Like you're not safe. You're home. You're supposed to feel safe at home. Right. Um, that, and then I thought about, it's interesting that like the Joker isn't the Joker in Arkham Mm -hmm. and the Riddler, but they don't really show them. Or is the Riddler at the jail? No, at this point, I believe Riddler and the, I think, I think they show Riddler and Joker in Arkham at the end of the movie. Um, but I might have to confirm that they, he, they might have been at Blackgate, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they were both in Arkham. They should be. <laughs> They're crazy. Well, like I said on the last one, I mean, kind of the running thing with Batman is like they they always just put the crazy people in Arkham and they always end up either escaping or getting out by some corrupt person signing off on them being sane again. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we saw it happen with Sophia and like all throughout every like Batman, everything. It's like the Joker always escapes Arkham. He, he escaped Arkham again, whatever. Even like the Harley Quinn stuff, the jo- <clears throat> Joker meets Harley in uh, Arkham. She's a doctor at the time and mm-hmm. he brainwashes her to break him out and she becomes Harley Quinn. So right. it's like, that's always like a constant theme that all the um, villains are able to escape Arkham pretty consistently. I also thought when Oz was apologizing to Sophia, saying, like, I'm sorry I ratted and everything, I didn't mean it, that it did seem pretty genuine, and I think he meant it. Like, I don't think – I think he meant to put a wrench in the family and try to break things up. I don't think he wanted all of that to happen to her that happened. Yeah, definitely not. Like, I I think he really cares for her, but he's just, like, he doesn't know – He's, like, a very caring and compassionate guy, like how he is with his mom, but he also just ruins all his relationships. Like, he doesn't know how to be a healthy person in a relationship, friendship. Well, he's just not going to let anyone stand in his path, I feel like. You know, he he gets close to people but then uses that to his advantage. It's just dumb because he – like, if he just stayed with Sophia, imagine, like, the team. Right. It's like, why do you have to be such an idiot? Well, he didn't know. He wasn't with Sophia at the time when he made the promise to the Maronis. At that point, he was already trying to, like, fend for himself when when uh, when he went to the jail to meet with Maroni and give him the ring and everything. I know. He <laughs> should have, once he became partners with her, he should have just told them – Forget it. But then I guess he would have to, they would just tell her that he killed right. Alberto. So, yeah. So, so then he even, told. he says that to, he says that to Vic. He's like, we're in it now. Like, like now I'm really screwed. Like everyone knows the truth. So, you know, and then should we just get into episode four? Yeah. Because episode four starts. It pretty much starts right where episode three left off. Yeah, it just gives us more of their conversation before the car crashes, which... Which I thought was really cool that we saw at the end of episode three kind of in Vic's perspective, and now we're seeing the start of episode four, a little bit of a flashback, but we're seeing it from their perspective instead. Yeah, so... Ep- instead. Yeah, so episode four is called... I don't know how to say it. She says it when she cheers as Sent- Sentiny. Sentani. It's, yeah. That and means cheers, maybe, in Italian? I would assume. We should probably know this, but we don't. We don't speak Italian. We're not real. <laughs> We're Italian-Americans, hard through and through. We know how to make sauce. That's it. Yeah. Um, it says it's an Italian phrase that means 100 years or may you live 100 years. I like that. Let's start doing that. Well, sent what is what how do you say it or what's it spelled? Like S C E N T is centennial, which is a hundred. Yes, C E N T apostrophe A N N I. So the Ani would be years and then cent is a hundred. So Centani, you say, I'm pretty sure. Centani. 
We're doing it. Okay. <laughs> We're doing it. That'll be at Thanksgiving. It's a one, it's a one sentence synopsis. Sophia confronts her past in Arkham State Hospital, makes plans for her future. Well, they didn't want to give anything away in that synopsis, which I like because I was not expecting an episode like this. And yeah, I'll it say crazy. it again, it was powerful. <laughs> It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Um, so we start off, like I said, with them seeing her perspective. We see how she kind of gets away. I mean, she just she hits her head really bad. She's able to call her uh, doctor or the psychiatrist, Julian, that you were just talking about, the one with the uh, the red light and the forcing her to relive her trauma, I guess. Well, you can't skip over the fact that Maroni, Nadia, whatever her name is, told mm -hmm. Sophia that Oz killed Al. Yep. Well, we said that at the end of episode. They didn't three. say it until this one. Right. But I said, like, Nadia ends up telling her the truth about oh. Oz. But yes, oh. you're right. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I was Oh my god! And like the fact that she just sits there and is just staring, I just love the way she handles everything. Yeah, this episode is just iconic. Period. Admit it was it. pretty. Yeah, it was was not. I was not expecting it to continue on the path that it continued, and we just find out a lot about kind of what I was saying on our last episode about like Arkham and how they experiment on people and use the harsh tactics, like the electrodes on your head and lobotomies and things like that. Um, so Sophia called Julian for help. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden it flashes back to the charity event that she's at. When you see Oz kind of like just being her driver and she's speaking on behalf of like uh, suicide and women and housewives and things like that. And you kind of see that Sophia was never, wasn't always a bad person. She is a nice person. She doesn't really know what the family is really about. She just knows that her dad is really wealthy and he has a good job, but she doesn't know what that job is. Yeah. She's and pretty yeah, she's pretty uh, in the dark about everything. Um, whereas you see like Alberto kind of knows a little bit more. But like I said before, like the women are kind of kept in the dark and they're just expected to just go with the flow. Um, and then you see Sophia slowly but surely starting to ask the right questions and get a little, I don't know, a little uh, realizing it's a little sketchy or, she, or it's a little suspicious. immoral, I guess. Suspicious. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Um, so, I did what you did for this episode and like hand wrote notes. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was I was way more In depth <laughs> Yep I got a page and a half Because so. like writing on my phone I'm just like oh like I don't want to be on my phone More so and then once you pick up your phone You check your text so that's probably Part of my issue <laughs> Yeah I have a couple things To say here so When Sophie and Oz are arguing like at the beginning he says like I'm not a rat I think and she's like yeah and I'm not the hangman so then it kind of segues into that flashback like okay she wait she's not the hangman because you are you're made to believe this whole time that she is yeah so I said I wrote that down in episode three notes so she actually says that at the end of episode three I think oh but either way it's like in that it's in that flashback when we see like from Victor's perspective versus their perspective. But either way, it's in that it's in that same conversation. Yeah. And then another thing I think is interesting is how much she talks with her hands when she's in the flashbacks, like when before she becomes who she is now. Like she's I don't know if you notice, like everything is like hands, hands, hands. And I don't know what that's supposed to mean because I feel like now she doesn't do that. Hmm. Interesting. I know. I can't think of why. Maybe she was just so comfortable, like in her own skin, and her just—I don't know—more Italian, more like 
culture back then and then now she's kind of like screw all of anything to do with them i don't know and then i liked when she said to oz you have a dick so at least you're eligible for a promotion which is what i was saying with the with the family mm -hmm. um but then they also show carmine promising her the family so i don't know if that was just a setup by him because it was a little odd for him to say that when Sophia doesn't even know what the family does. So I do you think, think he's going to, she's all of a sudden going to be comfortable with that? No, I feel like he didn't really know what he was going to do. And he was saying that and trying to keep her close to him and like grooming her because she was the only one who could have suspected that he killed the mom. Cause they, he found her when she found the mom hanging and he, like she says to him later on, you had scratches on your hands. Like she starts to question things. So I think that's why he was promising her all these things. And I don't think he truly meant it because the way Alberto acts, like he acts like he's taking them over. And I'm sure he promised Alberto the same thing. That's my take on it. Right. Um, well, I don't know if well, you probably didn't notice, but you have to rewatch the movie, like I said, but there's a new actor for Cameron Falcone in the Penguin series. Thanks for motorcycle. In the Penguin series, then there was, then it was in the Batman series. So not in the Batman series, in the Batman movie. So in the Batman movie, it's John uh, Turturro, which you'll probably, you'd recognize from like Adam Sandler movies and oh, uh, yeah. what else was he in Transformers. Um, I think he did okay in the movie. I just, it's hard to not see him as like a comedy actor for me so to yeah. see him in like a serious role i mean i didn't dislike it it didn't like ruin the movie for me but like seeing the new guy now who is mark strong you'd recognize him from sherlock holmes and i'm trying to think of what else he's in um but i really like him as an actor and after seeing that episode now i'm like damn they should have had him in the movie yeah because he was really good did he he just plays like a, he plays like a villain in a lot of movies, I feel like. So it was easy for him to play this one. I think he's in, uh, was it Vikings that I watched maybe? Or I feel like he was in like a Game of Thrones type show also. It might have been Thrones. Let's see. Did you look him up? Oh, yeah, I guess I could have just clicked his IMDb. I have it up here. Um, but yeah, apparently the original actor, John uh, Turturro, denied the role in The Penguin because he was afraid that it was like too misogynistic or something, which it's like, it's not much different than the Batman movie. So, you know, it's like pretty much the same premise, which you please just watch the Batman movie soon because I have a lot of references about it <laughs> and you don't get them. Oh my God. I don't like to just sit on the couch and do nothing. <laughs> I think you can handle it. Watch it in three seconds. <laughs> you know I love sitting on the couch doing nothing. I know, but our fans don't know that. Um, to, just to fill our fans in, my brother, the biggest Batman fan <laughs> probably in the world, is so behind on this show. He's only on episode four. I, Me and Mike are finished up to date. And I said to you today, how are you not up to date? And you wrote, we're really busy. I don't really like to just sit around and on the couch doing nothing or something along those lines. I said, it's hard for me just to sit on the couch and do nothing. I need to constantly be moving. Lindsay, I, I was in that office the other day and I was like, what should I do right now? Like, what do I, like, what do we need to do? And she's like, why don't you just come sit down for a few minutes? And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> you got me. But even when that, I went to go sit down and I still had to do something while I was sitting down. So yeah. for some yeah. reason, you and I are very different in that aspect. Your nervous system's going to be shot. Shot. It's always it's shot. Already shot. Yeah. So I'm trying to force myself to take a day off at least once a week. It's not going so well so far, but we'll work on it. Yes. Um... Who'd you say? And Lindsay's giggling to herself in the other room. <laughs> oh, Les. Wait, Mark Strong, he's bald. Yeah, I mean, Colin yes. Farrell is also Irish, and he plays the Penguin pretty well, so. Oh, my God, so That's great. what they do. They act. Um, 
That's but he has a wig right. on, I guess, and stuff. Um, he's from the Kingsman, which I don't think Kingsman, you saw. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, you I saw think. it? Um, I saw parts of it, and I just remember seeing all the. I I remember seeing him in like the suit and seeing the trailers for it and stuff. He's and in Korea. Parts of it on a plane. The Emma Stone, Cruella, Green Lantern. He's in the second Dune, which I didn't see yet. Right, that too. Yeah, so he's a pretty prominent actor. Um, I wonder if they're regretting not putting him in the Batman in the movie. Uh, so if he continues on in the series as well as he does, I'm sure they'll keep him around, even though they killed him at the end of the movie. But with all the flashbacks and the different TV series they plan on doing, I'm sure he'll be around. Um, yeah. So we're going um, off the rails a little bit there. I put, I think during the conversation, like she should have obviously kept her mouth shut. She starts to question why was mom killed or why okay. did mom ever see a therapist? Like she was starting to question the dad at the dinner. So well, we I skipped, we, we, we skipped. Was that before or after the reporter? That was after the reporter approached her, but then she didn't actually go talk to her yet. She was at the dinner when, when Carmine says like, Alberto is going to embarrass me with when he storms off kind of thing. And he's like, he just has a drinking and a drug problem. And then at that point, Sophia says, starts to inquire because the reporter had already kind of put the ideas in her head, maybe a little bit um, saying like someone else just committed suicide, whatever. So then she starts to say, did mom ever seek help? And he's like, your mom was a proud woman. She doesn't really like interested in that type of thing and shrugs her off. And then the next scene is when she goes to talk to the reporter. Oh, okay. So then, like the report, everything the reporter's saying and showing her, she's kind of like forcing her to like flash back to when she was a kid and, and when she found the mom hanging. Um, and then, like all the puzzle pieces are kind of starting to come together for her. Like the reporter says, like all the all of the victims had defense wounds, bite bite marks, whatever. Their nails were all cut up and stuff. And she starts to remember her mom's nails were cut up. Her dad had cuts like on his hands. And she says that to her dad, like, I'm sure this is an explanation for everything. He's like, explanation for what? And she and she's like, the cuts on your hands. Like, I know I'm sure something else happened. And that's when he's like, all right, I got to do something about this. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Yeah, which I think he had this plan in his mind all along. If she ever gets suspicious. Right. I'm her away and that she's crazy he didn't want her to find her like that that's for sure yeah because they showed that scene too of him like running into the room and trying not to let her see everything because i guess he knew that she could start to figure it out what's the deal with his glasses the dad we couldn't figure that out either i tried to rewind it twice and it just that maybe she didn't want him to see um that he was lying or that she he wasn't crying or that she he wasn't sad or something like that maybe i would you know i don't know because she takes his glasses off to like see his eyes yeah and he like quickly puts them back on <clears throat> so i'm thinking maybe like he didn't want her to see that he wasn't showing any emotion um People say that, yeah, it's like in The Godfather, how the his eyes are always in shadow and in the dark so that you can't see, like, the soul. That's what people are suspecting on Reddit. Is that why me and you wear sunglasses all the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why is he wearing them inside? Yeah, exactly. Um, um, oh, someone... Linda someone wrote he had a black eye i didn't notice that so clearly the mom probably punched him in the face Ooh. i okay, did not well, notice that i just hope we find out which i don't think we're gonna like why they killed all these girls and why they killed the mom i think we'll find out you i did? feel like that's too i feel like that's too important to, to glance over i don't know I mean, why, like, why would Carmine kill his wife? It's very, maybe she didn't know what he did either. 
similar to Sophia and kind of just like maybe one day found out? My theory is that those girls were all like escorts, right? Like he just hired them, I think. And then he would just kill them after maybe had a fetish about it or maybe he told them something that he didn't mean to, whatever. And then probably the wife started asking questions about all the girls that were dying. In the movie, he tries to kill Selena Kyle like that too. Hang her? No, strangle her. Like he he puts oh. his hand he puts his hands around her neck the exact way that they show like the bruising in the the victims in this one in the show. Mm -hmm. When the reporter shows the pictures, you can see like the fingerprints. Right. Um, so they definitely did that on purpose. <clears throat> and once again, I don't know if you remember, but in the in the movie, uh, Selena Kyle, Catwoman, admits to being his daughter. So there's going to be a lot of intertwined situations with that as well. So one of the hookers that he killed is Selena <laughs> Kyle's mom. Hmm. And and they and she says that in the movie too. She says that my mom used to hang out in the club with Carmine, and uh, she used to bring me along because she didn't have a babysitter. And all of a sudden, she showed up dead. And I don't remember if they talk about it being a suicide or not, um, but I wouldn't be surprised. Did they say that in the movie? She's got her headphones in, um, but I think they did. Hmm. So we're gonna. That's gonna be intertwined <clears throat> um, in this series, if not this series, probably. I think there's rumors that there's gonna be a whole Catwoman series similar to the Penguin. Ooh. So I'm sure we're gonna find out a lot about that, and maybe. Well, I'm sure we'll find another show to do between now and then, but I'm sure that'll be a good one to build off of and continue this. Continue this going. Keep this going. Um. So next, she snaps at Oz when he's driving her after she talks to the reporter. She kind well, she of snaps she, on the reporter first, and she yeah, kind of realizes, yeah. like, uh, I should, I really shouldn't be doing this. Yep. And then she says to Oz, you're just my driver. Let's not forget something along those lines, which makes him mad, and that's probably why he rats on her. And then they get to the birthday party. Carmine's because birthday what's the one thing? what's the one thing that you can't do to – to Oz or the penguin. Yeah, you can't. Make fun of him or like disrespect him mm -hmm. or make him feel less than he is, I guess. Right. So then birthday party, it shows kind of like how close she used to be with the cousin Carla. And she also says something to Oz at the party that is also very disrespectful. Do you did you catch it or did you remember it? Yeah, she's like, oh, what are you doing in here or something, right? She says, what are you doing inside? So, like, you should be waiting for me outside type type situation. And then she's like, is that a new jacket? So, so it I seems wear. like Carmine has already given him a promotion and maybe some new ca some cash, and he went out and treated himself. Probably when he, gave, and everything. when he gave Carmine the info. Intel. Yeah, he probably he probably immediately graduated from being her driver. He had to go get an, a new suit to be able to be in the house or whatever. And Sophia's kind of being disrespect being disrespectful, but I don't think that was her intention. I think she was kind of just surprised at him being allowed in in the house and being allowed at the party. So you see Oz starting to grow into who he is and who we see him in uh, current day. Mm -hmm. um, and then at this point, that's where they see uh, Carmine starts to question Sophia about like what she knows. And like she, he starts to accuse her of being crazy. And this is when she brings up the scratches on his hands that I just said. And then as soon as she says that Carmine, like is basically like, honey, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I think you're sick. Like, are you, like, are you yeah. feeling okay? Like, yeah, you're confused. Like, what are you talking about? And she's just like, I'm not confused. And almost as a viewer, you start to question like, wait, is she crazy? And like, are we not seeing the whole story? And maybe she did kill those women. You know, like we've seen so many murder mysteries where you're like, you don't know the truth. But <laughs> we're kind of like brainwashed by television. 
where it's like, no, clearly they're trying to say that it wasn't Sophia, but like we're still, or at least me, I'm still kind of like, yeah, maybe it was her, and they're kind of just like building the story, you know? You know what I mean? Like, what was the movie, what was the show that we just saw where it's like they they think you're they they want you to think it's someone else every episode? What was the show that we just watched? Yeah. Oh, we so should. Like, this would be an awesome forum yeah. that show. We could rewatch it. But you're not allowed. No, you're not allowed to look ahead or watch ahead anymore until we cover the episode. Okay. <laughs> It's gonna be problematic. I'll have to allow Mike to watch without me. No, next time if we do it, if and when we do this again, we'll we'll stick to a better schedule. Um, so, okay, he spends it on her, and then she ends up going to Arkham for six months as her sentence. Well, I thought this was insane that she leaves the party and then is immediately arrested, like what as soon as she leaves the house and then she's taken to arkham and she's still in the same dress not taken to arkham taken to like the precinct or whatever she's still in the same dress and then she gets taken to arkham like that night or like that morning he was so all of this happens within like a couple hours and it just like, shows how much pull he has yeah once oz told him if oz had enough time to get a new suit jacket he had enough time to plan this whole thing right he probably was um, thinking, like, maybe if when he confronted her, she would back down or tell the truth, maybe, because she says, I just told her to fuck off, but she is lying and he knows it. And she's like, Oz is lying. You can't trust him, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe he was hoping she would not end up doing what she did and then he wouldn't have to throw her away, but who knows? Yeah. So you find out she's in Arkham for six months and then she's going to have a trial. Um, and Alberto's kind of always there for her. He promises her that he's going to try or do his best to figure it out while she's in there. There's nothing he could do. It kind of leads you to think that maybe he had something to do with it, but I don't think so. Um, I think he genuinely was left in the dark. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think he's just so powerless at this point. I think he's powerless, but at the same time, he doesn't want the same fate for himself. So he's kind of going along with it probably behind the scenes. But then when he sees her, he probably is like trying to figure it out or whatever, you know, but we don't, obviously we don't see how he's acting like with his dad and stuff like that. Right. With the family. But you see him before she gets arrested when they're outside of the club, the Iceberg Lounge, you see him questioning Alberto like, oh, you see dad out with these girls all the time. Like what like what goes on like in these clubs? Like is dad dating or what's the situation? Like you're a man, like you spend more time with him, blah, blah, blah. And he kind of just like won't give her any information at all. Do you think the other girls died before the mom? I don't think so. Oh, because so Sophia, how old do you think Sophia is when she finds her mom? Like, do they seven. say? It? I think she said. I think yeah. I think they said she's seven or eight. I, I think. think he, I think he killed a lot of people first, then kills the mom, then continues to kill the women because they. The reporter says someone else just died. Right. Yeah, I think most of the hookers or whatever, like most of the ones that she's talking about, is more recent. But that could be why the mom found out, or that's why he killed the mom too. Maybe she found out he was cheating on her. Yeah, that's what I think. Classic. I mean, either way, it's a <clears throat> it's probably a long history of it. Um, so now she's kind of like in Arkham. You see the very disturbing scene of her getting like stripped down and and tested and whatever, prodded and um violated i guess you could call it and then she's like thrown into the, the the jail cell to get some rest and you hear the girl the crazy girl magpie next door um trying to get her attention which is obviously creepy yeah she's from the comics apparently i was googling it yeah she it was definitely it definitely rung a bell but i didn't get a chance to look it up who was she she was some kind of jewel thief um, she would steal like all bird because magpie's a bird. 
Mm -hmm. She would steal all like paraphernalia from people's houses that were related to birds, I guess. And then she eventually gets caught and goes to Arkham, but she apparently was part of the suicide squad. And then she shared a cell at Arkham with poison Ivy. Yeah, it says Magpie is a, has no superpowers, but is a skilled gymnast who uses explosive toxins and razor blades. She also creates deadly booby trap replicas of museums, museum items she steals. Huh. I think she was in Gotham, too. Let me see. Magpie Gotham show. Yeah, final season of Gotham. She's in. Yep, there she is for sure. Yep, that's why she was. She rung a bell. Gotham's a really good show too. Um, and the chief psychiatrist is Doctor Ventress, not Doctor Strange. But she does say that there is multiple, so maybe this is just the first one. Yeah, and it's. It's also crazy. I mean, I might as well bring this up now that we find out a little bit later on that she's been in Arkham for 10 years by the time she gets out, which is insane, literally. I don't know how she can put up with that treatment for 10 years. Or how did not how did someone not break her out before then? I mean, obviously Carmine Falcone has a ton of power. Um, but it's just yeah, 10 years is a long time. Um, but you also see Magpie, this is where we first see the drug bliss. Yep. Um, they give Magpie the pill and her mouth is like all red and you see her like hallucinating and being like all happy. Um, and then right after that, <clears throat> um, Sophia gets her ass kicked by that crazy, creepy looking girl. And right off the bat, she realizes that she's the only one that's not in chains. And that's all, that's right away a little uh, suspicious to her. Yeah, obviously they all planned that. Like the guards and stuff. We're trying to make her break and unravel. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you don't you think that's over, and all of a sudden they bring her back to the kitchen or to the cafeteria, give her a fork, and kind of try to trick her into killing uh, the crazy girl, which it looks like she's about to do, um, because I'm sure like that instinct, that like craziness is in her a little bit as a falcone like that that drive to kill somebody or get revenge um but then you see her kind of snap out of it and say no wait this is exactly what you want me to do mm -hmm. um i'm not going to do it and then obviously things start to go south and then the crazy girl gets the fork on her own and kills herself which obviously they're going to blame on sophia and keep her in arkham for even longer yeah so she realizes that it was all set up, right? Yeah, and that's when they start the electric Electro. shock therapy. Which, which they still crazy. do that stuff. They do that not as high voltages, but they do that for people with like really bad depression, and it actually really helps. It's not like that where the body convulses, it's just very like mild. They do. Interesting. <laughs> well, um yeah i know there's i did some work recently at a mental hospital out east and it was like very old looking and like that was the first thought that came to my mind that like it reminded me of arkham and like like as soon as i got there i just felt like it was just like creepy i don't know so i feel like they used to do that type of stuff back yeah, then. like the spirits of the people that probably died there it was it was very eerie and I did not enjoy being there. Um, but anyway, um, so that's what I was talking about in Arkham. They start to show like all the messed up things that they do to these people that are in Arkham. And you see that Julian is like starting to believe her because he says to the doctor, like, what, is she, what if she's telling the truth? Yeah. And the doctor like right away puts a stop to that. And he's like, be careful, doctor. Like, you don't want to pretty much you want to upset the people pulling the strings here. Um, and then Alberto, you see Alberto coming to visit her. You think that she's going to get good news because that's the end of like her six months. And he tells her that she didn't clear the probation period or whatever, or whatever happened. And 
um, she's not able to get out and she's not going to serve on it or be able to get onto a trial, which obviously sends her a little bit into a spiral. Probably because they said she killed someone in there. So she's like mentally unfit. Right. <clears throat> so then she kind of, they, she goes back to the cafeteria and she kind of snaps and Magpie's like trying to be her friend or whatever. And she's like, wait, are you working for my dad too? So now like the paranoia is starting to set in um, that everyone's working for Carmine and she ends up killing Magpie. Pretty brutally, I must, I must add. So like I said, that that violence or that revenge or whatever you want to call it is definitely in her. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure it doesn't help that she's been getting um, electric shock treatment for the last six months every day. But she's basically just fed up with it. And she's like, whatever, if I'm going to be here, I might as well make it worth it. And she just smashes Magpie's head into the table about 15 times and kills her. And then she goes, I told you I was innocent. Yeah. And both doctors are standing there like, uh, <laughs> are you though? <laughs> like, um, so then it flashes forward out of Arkham. And then this is where we kind of find out how long she was actually there for. She's back in Julian's office. Julian's kind of like, what the hell happened? And she tells him everything, tells him everything that she found out, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's probably a little bit of a relief for him that she, that he like quit his job and like broke her out. Not for nothing that she was actually innocent, I guess. Right. Like this is when she kind of tells him like everything about Oz and I don't know. Do you have uh, anything written down for that part? It was like a very drawn out scene. I didn't want to write anything down because I didn't want to like miss anything. And then now I end up forgetting everything that she said. She basically was saying that she doesn't know why she trusts any men because all during Arkham, all the men were lying. Each doctor, she said the first doctor, the second, the third, then you left me. And then she's like, I shouldn't have trusted Oz. I should have known. And then she says, like, they all tell me I'm sick, but really it's the world we have to worry about. Yeah. I don't think she told him the stories. I feel like I feel like he must have known that and that's why he helped her get out at some and point. And she finds she finds the drugs that he's doing to like numb his own pain. Right. So he's he feels guilty about performing all those experiments or whatever you want to call it on probably not just her, probably on a lot of people that might have been saying the same thing. Like I'm innocent. Whatever. Actually, been also right. he's like holding her hand when she comes to. So I feel like you kind of suspect he's in love with her, but now it's like obvious. And then yeah. she like really close to his face, like she's gonna kiss him, and he's just standing there, like waiting for it and hoping for it. So she's trying to get him into the palm of her hand, which happens. It's actually very similar to the situation that I just said about Joker and Harley Quinn, except the opposite. It's a woman, woman patient and male doctor. Um, so it's, it'd be interesting to see. He's probably going to end up joining her, if I were to guess. Um, I'm sure you already know, since you are ahead of me. But can't say. <laughs> can't say. Um, so then this is obviously the best part, or I think the best part of the series so far. And I, yeah. the whole, the whole time I was thinking, Aaron, there's Aaron is going to start dressing like this. She's going to do her hair like this. Her, her eye makeup is probably already in the works. This is exactly who Aaron wants to be. <laughs> and if, if we hung out with the, if we hung out with the Grecos more when we were growing up, maybe we would be, but, um, but yeah, so Sophia enters the room and she just like has such a, essence or aura about her as she walks into the room and you out you know that she just has a plan and she says that to julian she's like you're not crazy i'm not crazy the world is crazy and it's kind of like there's something i got to do about this yeah and she said i deserve to start over or a fresh start so you think right. maybe we'll go to italy nope well he says that he's like well m maybe you should go like you deserve better than this or whatever um and then obviously it snaps to her going to the dinner. 
She gives that long speech. She interrupts uh, Luca's speech at first, and then goes, I actually want to say a few words, if that's okay. And uh, she just completely ignores everything he was saying, and then gives her own little speech about how she knows the truth about everything, and how disappointed she was that she found out about the affidavits that they wrote to keep her there, and saying that she had a long history of mental illness and stuff like that, um, which none of it was true. And you can tell that they have the fear in their eyes. Um, but then she kind of ends it. She like ties it back in. She's like, I know you all can't wait for me to leave. So I just wanted to say like, this is my last goodbye. And tomorrow is going to be a fresh start to me. Fresh start for me. Um, but we still don't really know what she's going to do. Is she going to leave or what's the situation? And then she is smoking a cigarette, leaves the window open in the bedroom. So that's what the okay. So I don't want to jump ahead, but we were trying to figure out how she kept him alive. What? What else is there to talk about? How are we jumping ahead? Well, all right. So now you see her, like the little girl says, "No, mommy, I like a, like daddy promised me that I would have cake." Um, so Sophia kind of sees herself in the little girl, her her cousin's daughter, and like doesn't want to. Maybe doesn't want her to find her mom like that. She doesn't want to kill the little girl, obviously. So she wants to like protect her innocence as much as she can for now. So she takes her out to the greenhouse, gives her chocolate cake and like kind of convinces her to sleep out there with her and not go wake up her mom. And then the next morning comes, Sophia throws on the gas mask and walks throughout the house, seeing that the entire family and everyone is dead. And it was incredible. It's important that the mask was in the child's backpack okay say. and it was <laughs> and it was johnny's window that she left open which i didn't realize when she was first keeping it open i'm like what is she doing and then now that you know he survived the gassing it's because his bedroom window was cracked open by her at the beginning did you know that yeah yeah I mean, that, it makes sense now or um you don't know that it's not her room when she's smoking um, or maybe I was just a little oblivious to it, but I feel like some things they can make a little bit more obvious in a way. Um, but I guess that takes the fun out of it to be able to look back on, on scenes, I guess, where they tie in together. Um, yeah, but I also notice it again. It's like, I'm just catching more things and paying attention to things. Cause it's like, you already know what's going to happen. So you're watching back to be like, okay, let me pay attention to. Yeah. But even like with the black eye that you said before, I didn't catch that. And I rewinded it twice. So, yeah. Whatever. Either way. I, stupid complaint, I guess. Um, but one thing I caught, which you might know the answer to already, but her shoulder was all burnt up. Yeah. So we're going to find out. What happened there, I guess? Um, it's just stuff from Arkham because she has like scars all on her chest. Like she, when she wears those, she wore that dress, I think, specifically to show off all those scars to the family because she was saying how you guys basically put me in that place. I didn't really notice the ones all over her chest. I just noticed one on her shoulder. Yeah, she had like kind of slash marks on her chest and on her shoulder. And it's just significant that she has all these marks. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also, important. Well, it? <laughs> also, whenever she wears like the really drastic liquid eyeliner, the cat eye or like something in that shape, she's about to F shit up. Cause it's it kind of like her alter ego. It keeps happening. Like it's just symbolic. You'll see. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And then I also was wondering, like, don't you think she's getting, like, less feminine, like, compared to before when she was – before she went to Arkham, she had, like, the long fake nails, like, the hair all pretty and very feminine-looking, the dresses. And then now she's, like – her hair, I feel like, keeps getting shorter. Yeah. Like, when she fur in the beginning, it was kind of, like, in a bun the first episode. And now – It was more proper. Yeah, now it's, like – turning into a mullet yeah slowly but surely um so i feel like i think it started it started in arkham like when they when they cut to her and her hair is just like a mess yeah 
So I feel like it's like her embracing. Maybe it's like symbolic for her embracing like her crazy side. Like if you if you guys think I'm gonna you guys think I'm so crazy then I'm just gonna act it. I don't know. Yeah, and maybe she's trying to just act more masculine and appear masculine because that's what like all the men in her family get things that they want. Also, when people are abused or stuff like that, like it's known that they cut their hair. Like women cut their hair because they don't want to seem like attractive anymore or whatever. So maybe that's part of it. But I just, yeah, it keeps getting shorter. Like in the next episodes too, you'll see it's, it's hmm. weird. It's almost like because when she first, when she wakes up at Julian's and she he she changes into his clothes and her hair is wet, it's like shorter at that point. And I'm like, did he cut her hair while she was sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I just like pay attention to that stuff because I feel like I always follow like the makeup artists and the hair people on Instagram and they – We'll talk about like how the makeup and hair reflects like the character's journey and like growth or the opposite unraveling. It's definitely it's definitely something to pay attention to. I mean, there's no way they did that by accident. And as you say, it's gonna if you say it's gonna continue to get shorter, um they'll either I feel like they'll either like say something about it or they'll address it or like it'll just get so drastic well where, where it'll be obvious why she did it maybe mm -hmm. um but is like i guess we'll find out we'll talk about it on the next one but me i'm curious to see if like if she's still playing like both sides of the coin whereas she's like trying to act a certain way with certain people and then when she like transforms into like the, the falcon she like starts putting the makeup on and and does her hair a certain way. So we'll see. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. So do you think she's keeping Johnny alive so she can just kill him? Well, you already know. See this <laughs> I guess the question I have is she keeping Johnny alive to toy with him and to have her own fun with him or is she keeping Johnny alive to keep the deal with the triads going, which I think is more likely. Um, but at the same time, if she kills everyone, there's no one left. So now she's in charge. So why does it matter? But I guess we'll find out next week. Yeah, she episode five answers that question pretty fast. Well, maybe I should go watch it. <laughs> yeah. text me like things like your reaction so we could just read that on the episode okay we'll because, do. or maybe i'll rewatch five tonight too because now i want to there's just yeah, like five and six, there's just so much that happens and then seven too you're just like your head is spinning all right well i'm excited i mean this show is i mean presumed innocence was really good but like you told our fans before obviously i have a soft spot for batman so this is like the best show I've seen in a while where I'm like, well, presumed innocence, I was on the edge of my seat, but this is different where it's like more action involved. Whereas presumed innocence was just like all flashbacks and a lot more drama. Whereas like, this is like, yeah, like things happen like every episode type. It's of, type so unpredictable thing. too. Like you just don't know. Right. There is some stuff where I'm like, oh, I knew that was going to happen, but. Well, they they're trying, which which I really like is, I mean, you don't know much about Batman and stuff like that, which I've been trying to give you guys a little like some nuggets and things that I've picked up on, or like I said, like with the show Gotham or old Batman movies and things like that. Um, I feel like they're doing a very good job of keeping things a surprise and like kind of telling their own story or forming their own story, while also holding on to like the important parts of like the Batman story, like the classic comic books and old movies and things like that, where it's still like the same story in a nutshell, but they're, they're definitely taking their own, like putting their own spin on it, which is really cool. Yeah. And making it really realistic, not like weird people coming back to life and just like dumb stuff. Like it's like, it really could be Manhattan that this stuff is going on. Yeah. For sure. And uh, I'm sure it was like that in the 80s and stuff like that. 
I'd be curious to hear what Pop has to say about it. Um, but I'm sure things were, were a little crazy back then. And like you said, yeah, it, it seems more realistic than Batman ever was. Um, even in the movie, like the Riddler, in other movies and in the comic books and stuff like that, it's a more colorful character. And like, I mean, Jim Carrey played him in the movie um, Batman Forever. So that kind of just puts a light on the type of character he's been portrayed as in the past. And even in Gotham, he was a lot more like more bubbly and like more fun and like more of a prankster in the movie. It's very dark. Are you talking about like, Joker or Penguin? I'm talking about the Riddler. Oh, right. Jim Carrey was the Riddler. The green outfit with like the question marks. Yeah. So like that was a lot more like a colorful version of the Riddler. And like even in Gotham, like he was just like a really smart kid in Gotham. And uh, he like ends up like going crazy or whatever but it's just a very different way that they're going in this direction like you said it's more realistic it's not like like magical powers and like weird things like that so we'll see where it goes because they're going to eventually have to in introduce some of these characters like poison ivy and mr freeze and you know even the joker like it's going to be hard to keep them humanized while also giving them like some of the, like their powers i guess which ends up being like some of the exper experiments that they do in Arkham. They turn a lot of the villains into the villains that they are by giving them these powers or like new technology and things like that. Right. So we'll see. I'm very, I'm very excited. It's a cool story. And like you said, it's like just a different, at like much darker and more realistic. And I, I'm really enjoying it so far. What, um, to end it, I feel like you should say that video you sent me about the like why isn't Batman in the series? Oh, um, way. I don't remember exactly what it was, and I don't want to play somebody else's video. Um, but what was it? What was it like? They showed like newspaper clippings at the end of the movie, or when? When were those clippings shown? They released it, the Gazette thing. They released like a fake newspaper and it it was to promote the show before Penguin came out. So they were trying to explain like why Batman wasn't going to be in it. But I oh, okay. I can use this guy's video. He wouldn't mind. Enough. The people who constantly say, oh, yeah, it's great, but, like, it's unrealistic that he's in God, there's no bad news. Why the show works so well? First of all, HBO Max saw this coming a mile away, and they got well out ahead of it before the show was even released. They put out this marketing material, an actual Gotham Gazette newspaper with tons of Easter eggs, like laying out all of the fundamental groundwork of what you're going to see in the show. You know just how unimportant that man is in this series? They explained his absence away with this little political cartoon. You got Lieutenant James Gordon firing up the bat signal, to which one of the other officers says to him, it's been weeks, sir. Batman has not been in the picture since the flood, and that's the entire premise of why the penguin is rising to power. The show works so well because it's not relying on the hero, it's relying on the villain. I challenge you to give me a good superhero movie or TV show where the villain isn't the main takeaway from the audience. It's always about the antagonist. You cannot have a good movie without a good villain. It's one of the best first seasons of television we've seen in a while. It has everything to do with the world building and the attention to detail that they put into God. Absolutely nothing to do with it. Yeah, so it is very interesting. At the end of the movie, you see uh, Batman saving people, and they, they refer and they refer to it. I, I remember bringing it up on last week's episode when we recorded that. Like the last time they saw the Batman, it was when he was like pulling people out of the water and, and saving people. Um, so in that political cartoon, they're saying that the police officer standing next to Gordon says, it's been weeks, sir. So for some reason, Batman disappeared. And after he was helping people, he's gone now, whether it's like he's recovering from his own injuries or whatever the case may be. But um, it seems like HBO got ahead of it by releasing that and kind of puts a quiet to the whole situation where it's like, just be quiet. You'll find out where Batman was in the next series kind of thing. And if Batman was in this show, there wouldn't, like like Nick just said, this is a, one of the Barstool guys that does movies. Um, and he has a whole page on like nuggets that you might have missed. Um, so he's really good. Um, 
but he says like like there wouldn't be this show if batman was able to just swoop in and like take take oz away or like take so put sophia back in arkham or whatever the case may be you know so both of them are taking advantage of, of batman being absent because you find out in the movie that he's been doing this for two years so it's been two years of like them not being able to get away with a ton uh, they see that Batman's not bothering them, so they're trying to get all this done while they can, which is pretty cool, pretty interesting. But there was also a rumor that Batman was making an appearance in this in the series, so maybe we'll see him in the finale. Or maybe <laughs> he's in five, six, and seven. I'm not saying anything, but it's important that I just brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, maybe. on that note, <laughs> what? I said maybe he was depressed because the Riddler, the Riddler blew up the city and he couldn't stop him, so he's like hiding. Well, out. he does. Yeah, he does get shot at the end of the movie too, like with a shotgun, and like you don't think he's alive, but obviously he comes back. He like comes back and like starts saving people. Um, so I mean, the easy way out is just to say that he's recovering from like his injuries and stuff, but I'm sure they'll go into something deeper than that. Lower body injury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> upper body injury shotgun wound to the chest um so yeah mm. so for every time you bring up something in the future that's happening in this show i'm gonna remind you to go watch the batman the movie okay. and on that note i love you i'll see you next week for episodes five and six love you too bye guys thanks for watching